Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we'll be discussing an introduction to Cloud Custodian, simple rules for your cloud cluster and Terraform. Hey, everyone. I'm Sonny Shi. I'm a staff engineer at Stacklet and maintainer of Cloud Custodian. And I'm George Castro, community manager at Cloud Custodian. So what exactly is Cloud Custodian? Cloud Custodian is a YAML DSL policy engine um, for the cloud. It scales up from the startup level of just having a few resources and is used in massive enterprise scale in production uh, by many large organizations. The intent is to drive behavioral change and tighter feedback loops for your developers. But what does that actually mean? So I'll give you like kind of my plain, um, uh, we can go back one, my plain, my plain um, explanation for it is uh, you write your policies in, in YAML and Cloud Custodian is a rules engine that runs in the cloud's control plane and ensures that the policies that you're writing get enforced on your cloud. So uh, a typical example we like to use is make sure that we're not uh, opening a database and leaving it on the internet. Uh, so you have rules that kind of manage all of your resources. And typically you check these into Git or some kind of version control. And then Cloud Custodian ensures that those policies are enforced on your cloud uh, to make sure that, you know, if you have a policy to make sure that uh, you are not supposed to serve open databases on the internet, then we, we make sure. So in a lot of ways, the analogy we like to use is a seatbelt to your cloud resources to enable that um, if you accidentally do a thing manually, that you have automation in place to keep you safe. Next. And recently, as cost has been more important for people over the past 18 months, um, using these policies is also a great way to ensure that you're managing cost in your cloud. So you can use Cloud Custodian and people are using Cloud Custodian to not just ensure that they're meeting compliance needs, but do you have a bunch of unused DBS snapshots somewhere or resources that might not be tied um, to a specific account that you were expecting or, or things like that? So by defining all of these rules, you can manage your entire cloud deployment more smartly and things that aren't supposed to be there, uh, Cloud Custodian can kind of uh, garbage collect for you. That's where the analogy of the custodian is, is you define what resources and their limits are supposed to be in a certain place and custodian kind of forces that for you. And this is useful in the cost um, aspect, especially because resources that you are not tracking uh, tend to kind of pile up. So having that garbage collection for a lot of organizations ends up being a, a significant cost savings uh, by ensuring that what they think is running in their cloud is the actual thing that's running. And of course, compliance. Um, one of the great things uh, about this tool is that you can catch kind of your compliance and rules and by version controlling them and using them in CI CD. Uh, Cloud Custodian kind of en enables a GitOps workflow that allows you to manage all of that stuff in a tight feedback loop. Uh, because it does do real-time uh, compliance checking of these rules. So if today I were to try to deploy something in one of our resource and it was violating a policy custodian, you know, if you set it up that way, can remediate immediately and notify me that, hey, you know, uh, there was a resource that I asked for that isn't getting made because of these reasons. And what we are trying to do, as we alluded to earlier, is kind of drive that behavioral feedback of, um, you know, okay, so where where do I fix this? If I tried to set up a thing that wasn't compliant, where's the actual issue that I need to fix? Does it need to be in my Terraform? Or, or how can I then enable my developers to kind of, instead of running into these guardrails, uh, to kind of allow them to have that self-service in order to help change that organizational behavior to be more compliant. Next. And uh, correctness. Uh, you know, it it's kind of inefficient to set up a bunch of stuff and then find out that some of it is uncompliant and have to tear back down. That costs time, that costs resources, uh, developer time especially. So that's kind of why the model, the mantra behind a tool like this is to enable that tight feedback loop uh, driven all by your existing automation 
uh, that you have. And that's what we're going to talk about here today, specifically around Kubernetes clusters and around um, your Terraform. Yeah, so what does all this uh, look like exactly? Um, you start out with a policy. So first thing you do is specify a name for your policy, and you also have to select a resource. In this case, we're looking at S3 buckets in AWS. Then you can define um, any number of filters that you want it to filter on for those resources. In this case, we're saying we want to find any buckets that have a, a head bucket and get object uh, actions that allow the account uh, listed here to access it. Um, and then you can specify what actions you want to run. So in this case, we're saying we want to notify the resource owner um, and also to send a Slack message uh, using a certain policy template. So that way you can send these notifications directly to the people that are uh, violating your policies instead of having to do something like keep a list and then track it down and um, you know pass around a, a CSV or something to your, uh, your engineering teams. Uh, and finally, to do all this, you just run the custodian run commands where you pass in the name of the file and give it an output. Um, and then you'll start to see uh, your policies running. So here's another example policy. So in this case, we're looking for IAM roles that are over over provisioned. So you can see that we also support um, these uh, these nots, ands, and ors. So any sort of Boolean expression that you want to have. Uh, so we're saying ignore any any roles that are named IAM provisioner, um, and you want to check the permissions to say any roles that have this I am change password action inside of their uh, inside of the, the role itself. Um, and again, we want to notify that. So in this case, instead of sending it to the resource owner, we're sending it to the security uh, email distro uh, and copying the, uh, the cloud team as well. Um, so finally, also, uh, custodian policies can be run in two different types of modes. So there's a pull mode where you are querying the cloud itself uh, or the cluster directly. So in this case, every single time you want to check those over-provisioned IAM roles, you're checking everything that's out in the cloud currently. There are also event-based modes, which utilize things like uh, CloudWatch event triggers, uh, CloudTrail, and config uh, on the AWS side. And we have equivalents for that in Azure and GCP. Um, these modes allow you to trigger off of events that happen in your cloud, uh, as well as in your cluster. So that way you can be much more reactive, uh, as well as do things like uh, remove any non-compliant resources that are net new, instead of having to wait for the resource to exist in the cloud for a while, and then do some sort of action, because that can lead to things where you can potentially take down live running services, for example. Um, so Cloud Custodian uh, in Kubernetes has support for those two modes, uh, the first of which the pull mode. So you can query your cluster with the same policy language as your cloud. Um, basically, this means that if you're familiar with running custodian policies for AWS, Azure, GCP, you'll feel right at home. Um, in addition, there is a Kate's admission mode where you could run custodian policies in an admission controller mode to allow deny or warn on any sort of object lifecycle event. Uh, it's easy to, to deploy in your cluster with the Helm chart. Um, and you can also do things like auto-label objects as they come into the cluster to determine resource ownership, for example. Uh, finally, we have Terraform support as well. So not only can you govern your infrastructure that's already out there, you can also use Custodian to govern your infrastructure as code. So this allows your developers to know ahead of time that the, the things that they're deploying are not going to be compliant or they're not going to be um, in line with the guardrails that you've set. This way, they can make those changes early on and not have to deal with the headache of going, going back and uh, potentially having to do things like stop a database, um, schedule a downtime, and uh, recreate it. Um, in addition, C7 and left will also annotate these policy violations in line, uh, which is really nice to see this is the exact thing that I have to change um, according to the policy itself uh, and makes it a lot easier for developers to do the right thing. So we'll go off and do a quick demo. 
let's see. So the first thing that we'll start with will be a Kubernetes pull mode example. So um, on the left here on my screen, uh, I'm just running the Kubernetes admission controller, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but first, let's run the policy for Kubernetes. So like I said, this is pull mode. So this is pulling directly from my cluster. Um, and I, if I take a look at that, uh resource json that comes back so this is basically all of the information that you would expect to see if you do like a kubectl describe pod um, and if you get every single pod and this is a great way for you to see uh, attributes that you can filter on for example so let's go and take a look at the event-based modes so the first thing that we'll do is we'll take a look at our uh, policies that we have here. So the policies here are just in a config map that we've deployed to our Kubernetes cluster. And you can see here we have a few. So the first one here, deny pod exec based on the pod. Uh, we have another policy here, checking for missing recommended labels. Um, another one, restricting service account usage uh, on pods. And then uh, one last one showing that uh, we need to require at least three replicas on any Kubernetes deployment that we have. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll try to create a pod. So let's take a look at our pod manifest right here. So the first thing you can see is uh, we've, we've got our pod manifest. And if we try to deploy that, you can see we get a warning saying missing recommended labels. All pods must have foo and bar labels. So you can see in our manifest here, we only have the foo one. So we take a look at our uh, pod that we created. Uh, not only do you see we only have this foo equal bar label, but we actually use the um, the policy itself to append the owner contact label here. So we can see that the Kubernetes admin was the one that created the resource, and then we also have this additional message uh, that we uh, that we appended as a label uh, saying it's missing labels. So if we delete our pod there. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add our bar label. You can see we don't get any warnings. The pod was uh, created successful, successfully. Um, so this is a great way if you want to sort of ease developers into uh, making sure they're doing the right thing before you do a, a hard restriction. Um, the next thing we'll do is, uh, actually, let's keep that pod up. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll try to uh, do a exec into that into that pod. So if we run uh, kubectl exec, we'll see here that we actually get an error saying that um, it failed due to these policies, which says you can't connect to any pods with database in the name or the namespace C7N system. Um, so this is really great to allow you to have more fine-grained control on some of the uh, actions that developers can have against the resources. Um, and let's, so the next thing we'll do is check out how to, uh, what happens if we try to create a pod with a more restricted service account. So the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll create this service account here. We'll, that's called cluster admin. Um, and let's try to apply pod with service account. Uh, actually, let's take a look at what that looks like first. So here, the main thing is that uh, we're using the service account called cluster admin, which I'm sure you can assume has all sorts of permissions that you don't want everybody to use. So if we try to apply that, so we apply pod with service account, you can see here that, again, we get this restriction saying you can't use that uh, service account. Uh, finally. Uh, we had that policy there that restricted deployment saying you have to have at least three replicas on your deployment. So if we take a look at our deployment YAML, we see that uh, this one has three. So this should be able to work just fine. But if we go ahead and drop that down to two and we run a kubectl apply deployment.yaml, we can see here. 
uh, it failed to mention due to the policy require at least three replicas. So let's go back in and change that two into a three. You can see that our deployment was able to go through just fine. Um, so again, all the stuff you see on here uh, is basically what you would see in your logs uh, for your deployment when you deploy this on your cluster. Um, basically, it'll match against only the events that you actually care about uh, for your from your policies. Uh, so the next thing we'll take a look at will be our C7 and left demo. So C7 left is a separate um, CLI from custodian. It has one command, so we'll just look at the help here. So there's a C7 left run command. Can you, sorry, can you increase the font up one on this one? Sure, yeah. Yeah. So if we go C7 left run help, um, basically what you do is you can pass in a policy directory, which will be your custodian policies, as well as a directory for your actual Terraform itself. So if we take a look at the policies, you can see we have a policy here that says all resources should be tagged uh, and specifically it needs to have this environment tag. And then we have one saying that all SQFs must be encrypted. So if we run C7 left run uh, and we give it our policies directory as well as our uh, current Terraform directory, we can see here that we failed two of these uh, policies. So the first one saying that uh, SQS must be encrypted. And the second one here is saying all the resources should be tagged. Uh, so if you look at our main.tf here, we can note that, so this first one, we have a SQS queue that we just have uh, here. It's not in a module or anything, it's just directly in the, in the main Terraform. Um, so if we add our tags here, like so, that should fix the first one. And then you can see in the you can see here in the second one we're actually using a remote module. So um, rather than uh, only be able to test the Terraform that you have directly inside of your local Terraform workspace, it will actually be able to look up the the module references as well. So here our problem was that we had uh, manage SSE enabled set to false. So if we set that to true, that should fix it. And if we run C7 left again, you can see that we have. Uh, pass all of our policy checks. Um, and you can also look at the summary based on the resources as well. So in this case, we have some IAM documents and those pass as well as our SQS queues. So those are the demos. Um, and I'll go back to the, the slides here. And that's basically a tour of a uh, custodian on a cluster and uh, in infrastructure as code. If you're interested in this, you'll find us at uh, KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon in Europe, in Amsterdam, uh, coming up. And uh, we don't have any information now, but hoping to also have a maintainer session as well. If you're interested in contributing and checking out all the um, cool stuff that an open source project has to offer. And with that, Sunny, thank you very much. And thanks everyone for listening. And uh, feel free to join us, cloudcustodian.io. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.